you know, we we are in a political season right now. Um, there were so many gubernatorial races that just took place, and um, the Democrats really did yes, well it did. across the United States. They did well this go round, but they won on on uh, one of the major issues was Roe versus Wade. It was overturned, um, and many of Excuse their uh, Republican counterparts. Excuse me. Was... Excuse me. Go ahead. I hate to do it. I'm getting off them. Doing one one or two a day. <laughs> now you know damn well at your age. I'm down from two packs to like one or two a day. So for all those people looking, shut up. <laughs> so go ahead. You were saying about uh, the Democrats having, a, yeah, they. And, 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 you more than welcome to keep it. You more than welcome to keep doing what you're doing. But let's get back to Democrats. I am aware of the fact in what Ohio helped me, Michigan, and a couple of us in Kentucky, I think. In Kentucky, yeah. yep. Yeah. Traditionally, traditionally red states, they now have Democratic. Because it, the thing about that, Sean, is this. All of these statistics mm -hmm. show with regard to abortion, people want women to be in control of their bodies. They don't want women to be forced to have an abortion, even have forced to keep the baby, even if it's on rape or incest, or for that matter, whatever reason a woman might feel, right? Because she is the one who's gonna do it for nine months and probably for the next 21 years of the, of the child, she's gonna be the one doing it. So for me, the fact that about 60 to sometimes 80 percent in some states of people say, yeah, the woman should be in control. You have a very small, small minority in Congress who are doing it the other way and they don't care about and they claim to be about life, real life. They've used that very successfully because it sounds like they really can tell. First place, they're not going to tell about the life of the woman. They're telling you a slave for society. We're going to force you to have these babies. They're not concerned, in my opinion, about the life that she creates because that boy, for instance, can go up to 18 and be sent to war and get killed. They don't stop that. Why? We've got a whole lot of guns out here killing people, all of that. But for me, the fact that it's being done, a whole lot of things are being done against the will of what obviously what the majority want in a democracy, which is supposed to go that way. For me, that has been frightening. And this is, for me, one of the things that have happened that's causing me to be a little bit frightened because, man, you have a guy who is an admitted rapist, who's an admitted, uh, for me, he got on TV and said, just grab the pussies, right? He's, I mean, he's, his statements are obviously racist all the time. Yet we have these people who support him unconditionally. I mean, could you know, the guy from Russia right now who is now the speaker from, I think he's from Louisiana, right? He's there because he's for mm -hmm. a, a, a Bush, right? But for he's there for a woman being made to, the guy who didn't get it was against that. So that small minority in the Republican party is saying, we want all of this bad stuff, this stuff, I mean, the votes for instance, the voting rights are being challenged everywhere. Gerrymandering is going on. And good thank you that some Supreme Court decisions have been against that, despite Clarence Thomas and uh Amy Barry and all that, you know. But for me, um the the, the the abortion issue is for me like treating a woman like she's just chattel. She's just a slave. You have no right to make a decision about your own body. And why? Because my religion says, no, well, do you know what? If you're a Christian, you should know there's no statement from Jesus about abortion in the Bible. Find it and send it to me, Christians who are listening. There's nowhere where Jesus says anything about it. Now, I believe if you deal with Christianity and the philosophy that Jesus, he might have had some negative opinion about it, but there's nowhere in the Bible can you say any word comes from him saying that. So if you claim that you're representing Jesus when you have this attitude, you are not. 
but what you're also claiming that you're about a democracy. So if you're claiming that no matter what the majority wants, right, you have a right to impose your religious beliefs on the majority, you're not about democracy. And they claim, for instance, that the reason why this country should be more into a Christian thing is because the people who started it were Christian. That's a lie. You know what the name for most of the guys who are the founding fathers, you know what that name should be? Deist. Capital D E I S T. Go to your computer or your phone. That means they do believe in God, but believe in no religion. They'll believe in that all. They don't think there's any book. Deist, like I think my name Thomas Jefferson, uh, um, Franklin, uh, Benjamin Franklin, George Martin, all those guys believe, yeah, in God, but they did not believe that any book, including the Bible, that refused that. Matter of fact, Thomas Jefferson rewrote the New Testament. Did you know that? No. He rewrote it and no. excluded all of the miracles. He excluded water. Or water. Yeah. Yeah, I bet you can find it if you check out. But he rewrote it. And he excluded all the miracles, including walking on water, changing water, water and wine. Now, when it comes to Lazarus, although I'm a Buddhist, I believe way back there because Jesus was also an Essenian. Do you know what that is? It was a real, that was no, a real no. ascetic group that practiced meditation and all that stuff in the desert. Jesus was there for a minute and he might have learned some chiropractic techniques and stuff like that. All right. So I'm willing to say it. Way back that they might not have understood that a man Lazarus was in a coma, not dead. And Jesus, from what he might have known about how to manipulate the body, might have brought him back. I'm willing to accept that. But if you go to the, your computer right now and if you can find it, there's a book by Thomas Jefferson himself where he eliminates all the miracles. By the way, there's a question about Thomas Jefferson's biology, by the way. Did you know that? No, I didn't know that, but I'm definitely going to yeah, look up this on, book. On your phone, put in prints, talk about presidents who were not white, and see what you come up with. Before he died, Prince. Okay, I'm writing yeah, it down as we speak. Prince, yeah, just put it in. Including Abraham Lincoln. Yeah, yeah I'm writing yeah. it down now. But you know... I asked you that question about Roe versus Wade because you have a very, very interesting take on it. You're, you're the yes. product of it. Yeah, I am. Literally. And yeah, it, it, it's it's so interesting because we were talking about the governor in uh, in Kentucky and his name escapes me. But one of the ads that he ran was, you know, a young girl who was raped at 12 years old and she was not allowed to get rid of her baby. Amazing. So he actually let the right. victim of the rape um, speak for amazing. herself. Right, he did? I remember that ad. Yes, yes, yes. Amazing, yes. amazing. Yes. Amazing. For me, that there are people who would trample on the rights of a, to make a 12 year old have the baby to make her do that. I mean, that's the whole weight of the, the society coming down on this one, one 12 year old saying, everybody saying, you know, and make not even feel that she's done something evil when she's doing something for her own self. Why would you want to have for the rest of your life the evidence of your rape looking at you, talking to you? Why? Why would you give satisfaction right. to a rapist? And some rapists have even gone to court to sue. You know, for me, it's just what do you mean? A couple of times, that's one time where a rapist did, and he won. And you meant because there's another case where the girl was made to have the baby. I forgot. It's I bet it's on your thing, but yeah, there was one time when the rapist sued. And one in court. Sued, sued, 
pay for the victim to keep yes. the baby? And he won in court. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.